Hello everyone. Today we are going to discuss another set of awareness in relation to pediatrics. To start with, a 3.5 kilo term male baby developed respiratory distress soon after birth. X-ray showed the following finding. The baby didn't respond to surfactant therapy and died within few hours. There is a family history of sibling death with same features. What is the most likely diagnosis? You can, here you can see the X-ray. From the X-ray itself, we there is a possibility that we think it could be a case of hyaline membrane disease, but it is not that. Something it is a male baby, and it didn't respond to your surfactant therapy, and there is family history of sibling death. There are three proof points which will tell us that this may not be a case of higher memory disease, it is something different. The answer is, this could be a case of pulmonary alveolar proteinosis. Pulmonary alveolar proteinosis, it could be autoimmune causes, there are some secondary causes and congenital causes. It is relation, it is defect in the macrophage activation system, GMCSF, that related to your surfactant therapy. The surfactant, the surfactant, the uh, auto, auto, apoptosis of surfactant, there is some defect lies within the surfactant therapy. That's why the surfactant, they get deposited inside the alveoli leading to similar feature. Next, second question, an eight month old infant presented with history of recurrent episodes of seizure since six months of age associated with high grade fever, uni, unilateral clonic type and occurred in clusters. This is the history and history of one episode that worsened with phenytoin. Which among the following is not true? First thing, what could the diagnosis? Recurrent episode of seizure since six months associated with high grade fever. Is it febrile seizure? No. It is something beyond febrile seizure, something complicated febrile seizure which associated with unilateral clonic type that occurs in clusters, history of one episode, episode that worsened with phenytoin. Then it, the diagnosis is most probably it could be a case of Dravet syndrome. What are the, then if you know that this is Dravet syndrome, then among these four, which one is not true? It involves scn one gene mutation. Is it true or false? Developmental delay occurs in most children. Is it true or false? Clobazam and Valparin can also worsen the condition. Is it true or false? Artificial absence seizure can also occur. Here, the answer is not true with your clobazam and valparin can worsen. Actually, Dravet syndrome, this is also known as your severe myoclonic epilepsy of infancy. The gene involved mostly, most commonly is SCN1A gene. We can get focal clonic, prolonged, prolonged, which one is prolonged, we can get a cluster and severe forms of seizure. And the orsinine drugs are phenytoin, carbamazepine, ox carbamazepine, and barbiturate. These are the drugs, this can worsen the condition. And the treatment is valparin, your valparic acid, clobazam, and recent molecule is cannabidiol. So, here among these four options, SCN1 gene, true. Developmental delay is true. Artificial absence, it is true. The not true is your clobazam, valparin. These molecules are rather treatment rather they can worsen the molecule. So, the condition. So, this is the true statement. Clobazam and Valparin can also worsen. This is not true. So, we have to find out that this is not true one. Next. According to Bell staging, which of the following is a feature of 2B, not a case of, not a class of 2A. So, among these four, as you know, as your NEC, for your NEC, we are using the modified Bell staging. Among these four, which one is in 2B, not 2A? Is it nematosis in, in nematosis intestinalis? Is it portal venous gas? Is it blood in the stool? Or abdominal tenderness and dilation? Which one is coming under your stage 2B? Answer is portal venous blood. As you know, one, classified 1A, 1B, 2A, 2B, 3 and 3B. 1A, just your, just instability, apnea, bradycardia, lethargy, well, these features are non-specific. 1B, when will you get blood? Bright red blood from the retinum if you are getting, then that is 1B. 2A, 
So all are there along with that we will get intestinal dilatation that is your nematocyst intestinal so we are getting in 2A. 2B we are getting extra portal venous gas. This is important. If portal venous gas is there then it is categorized in the category of stage 2B. 3A all these features along with that we are getting ascites and 3B uh, we are getting pneumoperitoneum. So here the question is 2B. 2B means portal venous gas. 2A means nematocyst intestines. Blood industrial means 1B. So accordingly we can know. Next, which of the following is the largest component of surfactant? As you know surfactant has so many components. Which one of the following is the largest component? Is it phosphatidyl choline glycerin? Is it surfactant protein B? Is it phosphatidyl choline saturated? Or phosphatidyl choline unsaturated? Which among these four is, is the largest component of the surfactant therapy? Just this is one important MCQ, we have to remember the answer is phosphatidyl choline that to saturated form. As you know, phosphatidyl surfactant composition 80% are phospholipid, 10% natural lipids, and 10% surfactant proteins. Phospholipid, dipalmitoyl phosphatidyl choline 60%, phosphatidyl glycerol it is 20%, 20% neutral lipids in form of, mostly in the form of cholesterol, and surfactant protein we know SPA, B, C, and D. Among these, A and D are hydrophilic and B and C are hydrophobic. So, the question is, largest component of the surfactant, it is phosphatidyl choline, that to saturated form. Next, a 48 hour old newborn developed increased work of breathing, tachypnea, and upper and middle, middle lobe atelectasis with dextrocardia on X-ray. Of the following, which one is the most likely diagnosis? What we are getting? We are getting work of breathing is more tachypnea, just like pneumonia, upper and middle lobe atelectasis, that is one complicated form with dextrocardia. Here the catchy part is dextrocardia is there. So dextrocardia with all these features in a justly newborn, 48 hour old newborn, then, then this condition is mostly congenital. Then among these four, which one is the is the most probable diagnosis? Is it TTA, transient acute newborn? Is it pneumonia? Is it a highland membrane disease? It is, is it primary ciliary dyskinesia? As you know, TTA, <coughs> it is immediately we are getting features of TTA in newborn, then why at all will get dextrocardia? Then why at all you will get atelectasis? So this is not TTN. Pneumonia, highland pneumonia, same. Dextrocardia, this is the clue part. This is not fitting with all these three. So this answer is primary ciliary dyskinesia. As you know, primary ciliary dyskinesia as with the abnormal ciliary structure or function. Results in the retention of mucus and bacteria in the respiratory tract. Leading to chronic autocyanopulmonary disease, sinus abnormality and abnormal sperm motility. Clinical feature is we are getting persistent weight cup. Ranitis, neutral respiratory distress, ear problem, hearing loss, and dextrocardia. Around 46% we are getting dextrocardia. So here the answer is your primary ciliary dyskinesia. Next, an 18 month old child diagnosed as systemic JIA one month ago and is in remission with treatment now presented with high grade fever, lymphadenopathy, hepatosmiomy, encephalopathy. Lab test shows thrombocytopenia hyperfibrinogenemia with elevated liver enzyme and low ESR, ESR, most likely diagnosis. From nowadays you are getting so many cases. So here the clue, clue point is, it is a systemic disease, GIA, now present with high grade fever, lymphadenopathy, hepatosmiomy, all these with classical lab findings of thrombocytopenia, hypofibrinogenemia, this is most important, and low ESR. Then what is the diagnosis? Is it fear of the systemic disease? Is it HLH? Hemophagocytic lymphocytosis, is it autoimmune hepatitis or is it familial hypertriglyceridemia? The answer is we know this is HLH. Diagnosis will be established with one of the either one or two is fulfilled. One, one, one character, first character, molecular diagnosis. That is okay, but it is difficult to know. Then second is a diagnostic criteria for HLH, five out of eight criteria. What are the eight criteria? One is fever, persistence of fever more than seven days, splenomegaly, cytopenia, two of the three, either anemia, less than nine, either thrombocytopenia or absolute neutrophil count low. So these are the three among two of the four, three, if they are, then we will get cytopenia, hypertriglyceridemia and or, or hypofibrinogenemia. So 
फास्टिंग ट्राइग्लिसराइड मोर दैन 265 और हाइपोफेब्रिनोजन में हेमोफाइगोसाइटिस इन ब्लो मेरो और स्प्लीन और लिम्फ नोड सिक्स्थ क्राइटेरिया लो और एब्सेंट एनके सेल एक्टिविटी सेवन फेरिटिन मोर देन इक्वल टू 500 माइक्रोग्राम पर लीटर एट सॉल्युबल सीडी 25 रिसेप्टर सो अमंग दिस एट क्राइटेरियास एटलीस्ट फाइव हैज टू बी देयर टू से दिस इज अ केस ऑफ एचएलएच सो हियर द आंसर इज this is hlh next a child present with alfort syndrome with macrothrombocytopenia this disease is due to mutation in this is a case of alfort syndrome so simple thing is alfort syndrome which of the which is, which is the where is the defect it is collagen 4a1 gene collagen 4a5 gene collagen 4a6 gene or mos9 gene just you remember that this answer is collagen 4a5 gene for alfort syndrome we know this is टाइप फोर कोला जन द क्लासिकल इज योर फाइव अल्फा फाइव फोर टाइप फोर कोला जन एंड अल्फा फाइव सो कोला जन फोर अल्फा फाइव जिन दैट म्यूटेशन इज देयर अदर फीचर्स दिस इज हेरिटरी दिस इज एक्सीलेंट एसी इनिबिटर्स आर मोस्टली मोस्टली इफेक्टिव यू आर गेटिंग लेंस रिलेटेड डिफेक्ट्स लाइक लेंटिकोनस एंटीरियर लेंटिकोनस मोर कॉमन देयर पोस्टीरियर यू आर गेटिंग सेंसर न्यूरल हेरिंगनेस यू आर गेटिंग thinning and spreading of the glomerular basement membrane leading to basket wave appearance we are getting renal problems glomerulus and cochlear inner ear defect problem most mostly is your your type for collagen alpha 5c and transplantation is the only cure so here the answer is the just you remember collagen 4a 5g collagen 4 alpha 5g this you remember next a 14 day old newborn who had bilateral conjunctivitis now has cough with the chest infiltrate which among the following could be the conjunctivitis is it asymplegy is it chlamydia is it a staph epididymitis or mycobacterium as you know if conjunctivitis is there then so our diagnosis is limited here the answer is your chlamydia chlamydia neonatal sepsis with conjunctivitis could be two possibilities one is staph aureus one is chlamydia in staph aureus we are getting tlc leukopenia you are getting chest x ray chest lobar pneumonia and the cr will be rise but in uh, if it is a case of chlamydia then ts will be normal your x ray interstitial are infiltrated and cr will be normal so these are the things these are the differentiative point we can remember if conjunctivitis with pneumonia at this age group most probably we are getting could be we are getting a case of chlamydia next finding soon in the picture is associated with which syndrome what you are getting in this picture this is a newborn this is your natal teeth if natal teeth is there which syndrome among these four which syndrome is having natal teeth as one of the clinical features is it vacuity white mark is it russell silver is it lesen lesenian syndrome or ellis van creveld syndrome the answer is ellis van creveld syndrome syndrome with the natal teeth just we just we can remember syndrome with natal teeth it is peri remens it is rubin rubinson type it is harman steiner syndrome and ellis van creveld syndrome these are the four syndromes this associated with natal teeth next the clinical photograph x ray chest ecg finding of a 9 month old baby has sormino which enzyme is deficient in this side what we are getting this is hypotonia what are you getting this is your cardiomegaly what are you what are you getting this is your short pr interval then hypotonia short pr interval and your <coughs> your cardiomegaly the most probable diagnosis is your pompous disease we are get we know this is pompous disease then next question is which among the four the enzyme defect is it glucose 6 phosphate is it muscle phosphorylase is it, is it acid maltase or liver phosphate as you know the answer is your acid maltase pompous disease the answer is your efficient enzyme is your acid maltase thank you uh, please like this video subscribe to my channel and share this video thank you